morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us at Legacy Community Church this morning. Um, my name is Olivia, and today I will be singing a couple songs for you guys. So I hope you enjoy them. They wept, the morning sun was dead, the savior of the world was fallen, his body on the cross, his blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon him.
you were the word at the beginning one with god the lord most high your hidden glory in creation and how revealed in you are christ what a beautiful name it is beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was great.
have tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence
Jesus, I just want to thank you today for giving us this day and um, giving us the opportunities to still stay in touch with each other, even though the world is under complete panic. And thank you for giving us hope and the peace, knowing that even if we are still stuck in our homes, that you're in our homes with us. And that's pretty cool, I think. Um, we thank you for everything that you've let us do up until now. And we will thank you for everything you'll let us do and get to experience from here on out. And we'll be able to do all those things with you by our side. In Jesus' name, amen. So Legacy family, here we are. We are going to give you announcements while we eat uh, probably the world's hottest hot sauce. Three, two, one, go. <coughs> okay, so for our... We want to share with you the Church Center app. Oh, God, this we, is so dumb. So the Church Center app is really cool, and it's a cool <coughs> way for you to connect with us. Once you download it, you can just connect it to Legacy Community Church. I think my ears are going to start bleeding. Once you've connected, there's five things you can do at the bottom. You can get to our website, directions, email, phone number, spot where you could give. So you punch in whatever, the amount you want to give. When we start uh, doing small groups again, all that will be on here. And it even has a calendar for events. As you can see, the only event right now is our drive-in Sunday. Tell them real quick about the drive-in Sunday. Just show up at 9 a.m. Lake City Community <laughs> Church. It's a great thing. The last I don't even sauce. Know if I can do it. Go. <sighs> Go online at LegacyCC.org. We have blog, our services on YouTube. We have Papa's Tackle Box. You can get connected to us there. Make sure you follow us at Legacy Church FL. It's our Instagram. Hurry up so I can get through mine. And also follow Legacy us Legacy Church FL on Facebook. Just go to Facebook, Legacy Community Church. You can keep up with everything. Wednesday night prayer, 7 p.m. Make done? sure that you join Papa. We have a YouTube channel. Join us at 10:30 on Sunday mornings. Watch the message in the worship. Don't forget to give. There's three ways to give. Texting, online, on the website, and then through the app. But we I'm love dying. you guys. Thanks for watching this stupid announcement video. This is stupid. I gotta go cool my mouth off. We love you. I don't even know how to end it. Bye. I need water. I'm going to be looking in the text today at Leviticus chapter 26, verse 10. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV. The Bible said you will still be eating last year's harvest when you will have to move it out to make room for the new. The challenge that we're facing right now in this season that we're experiencing together is to hold on to the old, to the exclusion of receiving the new. Now, God's people had always related to God through a covenant that was based on works keeping the law. They have been delivered out of bondage. They're now a brand new community, and they're wandering in the wilderness. Now they have progress as we look in the book of Acts to the New Testament church. At the last Passover that Jesus would spend with his disciples, he gave them a new covenant. He was saying the old covenant is now being replaced, and now they're going to have to learn to relate to God by faith in a brand new way. You were saved by grace through faith. This is a gift from God, not based on works. And in, now in the New Testament church, we find this tension, grace versus works. And there are also uh, this exclusive idea that God is blessing a select group of people. Let me just add here as a side note, your tolerance for tension 
determines your potential for growth, but we don't like tension. And the problem with tension is, is what did God actually say opposed to the tradition of what we heard God say through the filter of personal preference? You know, when it comes to TV shows or movies or Netflix, we love seeing this tension. But what makes a good TV show is what we try to pray off in our lives. Take my problems away, God. The text can be interpreted two ways, a blessing or an inconvenience. If you live under the old covenant works, verse 9 told us, I will look on you with favor and make you fruitful and increase your numbers, and I will keep my covenant with you. This is grace measured out by behavior. Basically, what this is saying is, if you will keep your end of the covenant, then verse 10 says you still be eating last year's harvest when you have to move it out to make room for the new. That's what we call blessings. And so as we look at the book of Acts, we find tension In Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, let me read them to you. The apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. So the first thing that we're going to find in this story is, They're trying to protect the old. They've got to protect what they have been entrusted with. Why? Because the new looks like a threat. They were threatened by the blessing because they did not recognize it and it did not remind them of what they were used to in their religious routine. The church is growing. It is blessed. That's what they want, and sometimes God can give you exactly what you want, but the tension it takes to produce growth is super uncomfortable. As the message is going out, Peter is eating with Gentiles, the people they didn't want to let in the church. Now look at verse 4 and 5. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in the trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven from its four corners, and it came down to us where I was. I looked into and saw four-footed animals, the earth and wild beasts and birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Let me just go ahead and read that other verse. And I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The second thing we find is when you least expect it, something happens. Peter says, let me tell you the whole story. I wasn't looking for trouble. God brought it to me. Now, here's the real reason that I went to Joppa. There was a woman there by the name of Tabitha, and in the Greek, her name is Dorcas. She had died. She was a very important woman to the church because she cared so much about the people. They asked Peter to come and comfort them. Peter was just saying, I was just doing my job. I was going to see them, and when I got there, all I did, what I saw Jesus do. He sent everybody out of the room. He got down on his knees, and he prayed. And he turned toward the dead woman and said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. I went to Joppa, not expecting anything great to happen, but it did. I wasn't looking for trouble. It found me. And now there is the tension between God showed Peter. See, it wasn't about food. It was about barriers. He took the gospel to the Gentiles. They got saved. I remember that Jonah went to Joppa to get on a ship to run away from the Lord because he resisted going to Nineveh because these were the people he wasn't expecting God to bless. 
He resisted what he didn't understand. The question is, what are you going to do in Joppa? Will you be like Peter and make room for something new that your mind has not conceived? Or will you be like Jonah and run from it? The third thing that we found in this story is you can't receive miracles with old mindsets. When God shows up something new, we want to compare it to our previous point of reference. All you've got to do is dare to believe that God is making room for the new in your life right now. He said, you will still be eating last year's harvest when you have to move it out. God is moving things out of what's standing in our way in this season to give us what he's got. We don't like it, but he's doing it. Are you ready to receive what God wants to do in you, or will you run from it and resist it? The church was trying to protect what they loved while trying to embrace the new. There are three things that I'd like to leave you with today. Don't limit yourself by labels. Verse 8 and 9 says, I replied, sure and not, Lord, nothing impure, unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. God was trying to kill Peter's categories. It's his job to know what's best for you and for me. He's saying, stop limiting it, my blessings, by labels. There, there were for your categories, not mine. And God is saying, stop limiting and labeling things in this season that within that God is wanting to bless us in. Secondly, he said, don't be loyal to a lie. At the end of the story, the board called the board that had called Peter in, they, they brought him in to protest, which ended up in the end with praise. When we hold to a lie because it is familiar, we will miss what God is bringing to us in the new. Because we didn't like the way it felt, or maybe it was because of the tension. The third thing is don't be late. Verse 12 said there in that text, don't hesitate. If you hold on to the old, what you want and how it was and used to be, You might miss today's miracles, trying to hold on to yesterday's blessings. What are you holding on to right now that's old, that's keeping you from receiving what's new, what's now? It's not that the old was bad. If You just have to make room for the new. We're in a season of instability right now that is testing our faith to see how we're going to respond to the tension that we've never, ever been before. The blessing never checks your schedule to see if it's convenient. And how this works is you're not even used to it yet, and here comes something new. I want to tell you today, we might be living in Joppa. We're having to trust God by faith. Don't miss today's opportunities because you're too attached to yesterday's blessings. If you're holding on to something old, a habit, forgiveness, unforgiveness, whatever it might be, right now in your home you could just raise your hand as a sign of letting it go to embrace the new you have that God has for you. Would you do that right now? Would you just raise your hand and say, God, there's some things in my life I'm holding on to. I want to embrace the new. Maybe you would like to receive Christ as your Savior. Would you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, today is my day. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. And today, I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I believe he died, that I would be forgiven, and that He rose again to give me life. I receive this new life. This is my new beginning. 
I'm a child of God. If you prayed that prayer with me, find a church family somewhere to belong to and get connected with a family that you can belong to. Father, today, thank you for your word. Lord, we're struggling right now trying to to put things back together. Lord, in the midst of all the tension, I still believe that you're trying to bless us and show us some new things. God, I believe that you've got our attention to show us that you're going to do some new things in this season that we're in. God, help us not to be so tied in to the old way of doing things that we miss what you're doing in this day. God, we want to win lost people to you. And Lord, today, if you're using new methods and new ways, help us not to be stuck in the past of our lives. And God, today, for those that, that God, they're, they're waiting on the blessings and they said, but you did it this way and they're still watching and looking for the way you're going to do it. God, today, help us to just clear our minds and throw out the past Look forward and with open eyes and with faith in you that we're not going to just eat last year's harvest. There are new blessings now and we're moving the old blessings out and receiving the new blessings that you have for us. We believe that this is a season that you're doing that in the time of the tension that we're going through. So Father, today, thank you that in the midst of all the instability that we're, we're experiencing, you still are doing miracle and still blessing your people. We give you the praise and all the glory for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. If this has blessed you in any way, remember there are three ways that you can give. While you're at it, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss anything that Legacy Community Church has to offer. Hey, we love you so much. Have a blessed rest of your day.